সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আজকে আমাদের টেন্থ মিটে আমরা পৌঁছে গেছি আমাদের স্পিরিচুয়াল এক্সট্যাসি গ্রুপে আজকের নতুন বক্তা যে প্রথম বলবে আমাদের এখানে এখনো অব্দি বলেনি আমাদের মিটে তার নাম হচ্ছে সান্নয় সান্নয় প্রেসিডেন্সি স্টুডেন্ট ও আমাদের আজকের স্বামীজির কিছু কথা পড়ে শোনাবে তার সঙ্গে সঙ্গে আমাদের যারা ইউজুয়াল স্পিকার থাকে তারা তো আছেই যেরকম সোহেল আজকে পড়ে শোনাবে বেদান্ত পড়ে শোনানোর থেকে বলা ভালো বেদান্ত ক্লাস করছি আমরা আর স্বামীজির লেকচার গুলি যেরকম ভাবে সাজানো আছে বেদান্ত ভয়েস অফ ফ্রিডম বইটিতে স্বামী চেতানন্দ জি কম্পাইল করছেন খুব সুন্দর সেখান থেকে সোহেল পড়বে এবং আমরা শিখবো বেদান্তের কিছু জিনিস তারপর থাকছে আমাদের পরবর্তী স্পিকার ময়ূক থাকছে স্বামী রঙ্গনাথানন্দ জির জীবন থেকে কিছু পড়বে আমি নিজে ব্যক্তিগত ভাবে স্বামীজির জীবন থেকে যেরকম পড়ে থাকি প্রথমে লাইফ অফ স্বামীজি বা ইস্টার্ন অ্যান্ড ওয়েস্টার্ন ডিসাইপেল সেখান থেকে নিশ্চয়ই পড়ব এবং তারপর আমি এক দুজন স্পিকারের বলার পর আমি গুরু নানকের জীবন লাইফ অ্যান্ড টিচিংস থেকে পড়ব যেহেতু গুরু নানকের জন্মদিন কিছুদিন আগে গেছে আর আমাদের এই গ্রুপের একটি প্রচেষ্টা সবসময় থাকে সবার তরফ থেকে যে অন্য ধর্মের যে বিশেষ সাইট গুলি সেগুলি শেখা এবং ঠাকুরমার স্বামীজির আদর্শে বজায় থেকে সেখানে যেভাবে তারা পথ দেখিয়ে গেছে সেই ধারা বজায় রেখে আমরা চেষ্টা করছি অন্য যে ট্রেডিশনস গুলো আছে সেখান থেকে অনেক কিছু শেখা এবং তারপর সোহেল বলবে বিশিষ্ট ভাবে বিনায়কজির জীবনীর ওপর বিনায়কজি এখনকার একজন মানুষ স্বামীজির ফলোয়ার যিনি গোটা ভারতবর্ষ জুড়ে প্রচুর কাজ করছেন বিশেষ বিশেষত অর্ফানদের নিয়ে অনেক অ্যাওয়ার্ডও পেয়েছেন আমরাও শিখব তার কিছু কথাবার্তা জানবো আজকে সোহেলের থেকে এবং ময়ূক জয়েন করবে আশা করছি কিছুক্ষণের মধ্যে ময়ূক ব্যক্তিগত ভাবে বিনায়ক লোহানির সঙ্গে দেখা করার সুযোগ হয়েছিল মনে হয় একটি প্রোগ্রামে সেটিও যদি অভিজ্ঞতাটা ময়ূক শেয়ার করে ভাল লাগবে আমাদের এইভাবে আজকের যে মিটটি সেটি আশা করছি শুরু হবে এবার আমাদের যে ট্র্যাডিশন যেটি আছে বেদিক চ্যান্টিং দিয়ে শুরু হবে আমাদের মিট সেটির জন্য আমরা প্রস্তুতি নেব আমি প্রথমে গ্রুপে পাঠিয়ে দিয়েছিলাম যে বেদিক চ্যান্টিংটা আছে তার ইংলিশ ট্রান্সলেশনও বলবো এই মুহূর্তে আমরা সেই বেদিক চ্যান্টিং দিয়ে আমাদের যে ইউজুয়াল যে প্রসেস সেখান থেকে শুরু করব আজকের মিট শ্রী গুরুভ্যো নম হরি ও সহনাতো সহনৌ the english translation of this vedic chant is like this om may we all be protected may we all be nourished may we walk together with great energy may our intellect be sharpened may our study be effective let there be no animosity amongst us om peace 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 in me peace in nature peace in divine forces we were reading the life of swami vivekananda by his eastern and western disciple we are reading from the chapter the collegiate days of swami ji last talk we have seen that how swami ji was excelled in various aspects of life both in music and studies but he was not limited by career oriented studies or goals rather he was always searching for truth in everything he did he, we have seen he learned music at that 
period from the great renowns Ahmed Khan and Beni Gopal, from whom he learned the classical musics and also the various languages, the bhajans in Urdu, Persian language, Hindi, all these languages. He was excelled in all these type of music. And also how we see the principal of the college, Jablu Hesti said that Swamiji was an extraordinary student. Comparing him with the German university students, he said, I've never seen anybody on this of this age so sharp, so intelligent. He will surely make a mark in his life. That was that was what he commented on Shamiji at that young age. Today we will go forward with that. Let it not be imagined, however, that he was not a lad in other things. He was unkeen for adventure as ever, and the first to see the humorous side of a situation. Small incidents like the following show how strong was his affection for his friends. On the eve of the BA examination, one of his friends found himself in such financial difficulties that he could not pay the college or examination fees. Noren interceded on his behalf to the superintendent of the college, who had the power to remit the entire amount, but to no avail. One day, he resolved to make a last appeal and waited in the street at the hour at which he knew the superintendent was sure to pass. He made such an impassioned plea that the superintendent relented and the friends was able to take the examinations without any further trouble. The remarks of one of Noren's friends will give an insight into their attitude towards him. Said he, it was delightful to listen to him. His voice was like music to us. We would often open a subject for discussion just for the pleasure of hearing him speak. He was so interesting and above all, so original. Even at that time, he detested any sort of weakness. He was a great admirer of Napoleon and tried to impress upon us that the followers of any great cause must give the unquestioning obedience which Marshal Ney showed to his emperor. It was at this period that he began to interest himself in the issues of the day especially Brahmo Samaj. The healthy activities of the Brahmo Samaj were in sharp contrast to the moribund state of Hindu society and its leader, Keshav Chandra Sen, the hero of a hundred platforms, was the idol of young Bengal. We shall state here very briefly the underlying principles of the Brahmo movement. The travel of passing through a new birth of a nation brings in its train movements of reform. The struggle of a new vision seeking expression and the old established tradition desiring conservation. From the clash between these two come the reformers and the reaction arises. The Brahmo Samaj is the outward expression of an endeavor to liberalize and at at the same time to conserve the evolved instincts of the Hindu race. Its coming into existence was coterminous with the awakening of the intellect of the illustrious reformer Raja Ramohan Roy, a man of gigantic intellect, inflexible will, and the courage and the prestige necessary for any attack on the evils which threatened the very existence of the nation. He was wide enough to see that if Hinduism was to survive, it would be at the cost of many religious and social reforms. Later, Mahashi Devendranath Tagore and Keshav Chandra Sen became his most powerful followers, and it is really owing to these two that the life of the movement was assured. This movement protested against certain forms and tenets of the orthodox Hindu, such as polytheism, image worship, divine incarnation, 
and the need of a guru. If therefore offered a monotheistic religion which repudiated all this on the social side, reforms in the way of breaking up of the caste system and caste consciousness, the recognition of the equality of men, the education and emancipation of women with the raising of the marriageable age were demanded. It was a tremendous task which they assigned to themselves, one requiring endless patience and wisdom, but the Brahmo Samaj lacked the means of carrying out these reforms and the recognition of the fact that all reforms must come from within, that superimposition can have no lasting influence. It is not to be wondered at this, at that, this movement captured the imagination of young Bengal. In Noren was aroused a tumult of thought and feeling, and he came to regard the Samaj, whose meetings he often attended, as an ideal institution in which might be solved all of life's problems, individual or national. He was imbued with the same ideas as the Brahmo leaders. He knew the burden and had shaft under the rigidity of caste. He had no sympathy with polytheism and image worship. He espoused the cause with all earnestness, and it was his earnest wish that the strength of thought, depth of feeling, the enthusiasm and the personal magnetism, which were the characteristics of Keshav Chandra Sen and through which he influenced his numerous followers might one day be his. In 1878, there was a split in the Brahmo Samaj and a number of members headed by Pandit Shibnath Shastri and Vijay Krishna Goswami formed a new society called the Shadharan Brahmo Samaj. Noren identified himself with the new organization and his name is still on the rolls of the original members. He also joined at this time a movement for the education of the masses irrespective of caste, creed or color. His intense desire for freedom made him willing to identify himself with anything that promised liberation from obsolete methods or to cast aside anything that might interfere with his gaining of a larger vision. He was not content with passive passivity. He wanted to know the why and the how of every phenomenon, mental or spiritual. The most important trait in his character was purity. Like every other lad, he was subjected to influences of, of a dubious nature. The opportunities for questionable adventures were many, but the influence of his mother made itself felt here, for she had made purity a matter of loyalty to herself and to the family. Then too, something always held him back, as he himself said later on, and purity became the standard by which he judged all ideals and visions of the soul and God. It was the background to all his thought and feeling, and he felt that without it, the spiritual life was impossible. To him, it was not a passive resistance to evil, but an active, overwhelming passion, a burning spiritual force relating itself to all forms of life and far beyond the merely sexual definition. Brahmacharya was his ideal for students, a Brahmacharya of hard intellect, labor combined with and governed by great personal purity, a necessary stage of preparation of mind and heart for the vision which the scripture promised to those who are faithful to that ideal. We'll keep up to this. We have seen how Swamiji preferred a pure life and how he always had a quest to know the truth and that is why he also made himself join with the Brahmo Samaj and also with the new uh, split of the Brahmo Samaj to carry forward social reforms and especially the lofty thoughts that would take the mind to, to some higher realm. But we will see in later period 
that he himself becoming an inspiration for the whole of the nation and the world as well through his own philosophy that he got from his guru sri ramakrishna deva which we will see later on how he gets introduced to sri ramakrishna maybe in the later chapters now as per the schedule of today we are listening to the swamiji's life now we will uh, be listening to one of the one of our new speakers reading shan nai will be reading from swami vivekananda's quotes and in bengali he is a new speaker in our meet today shan nai is speaking first from the beginning এক যদি এমন ভাবে সমাজ গঠন না করিতে পারো যাহাতে সেই সর্বোচ্চ সত্য স্থান পায় তাহা হইলে তোমরা আর বাহুবলের কি গৌরব কর তাহা হইলে তোমরা তোমাদের পাশ্চাত্য প্রতিষ্ঠানগুলি কি গৌরব করো টাকা আনা পাই ছাড়া আর কিছুই কি কার্যকর নহে যদি তাই হয় তবে তোমাদের সমাজের এত গর্ব করো কেন সেই সমাজই সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ যেখানে সর্বোচ্চ সত্য কার্যে পরিণত করা যাইতে পারে জগতে কয়েক শত সাহসী নরনারী প্রয়োজন সাহসী হওয়া বড় কঠিন সেই সাহসিকতা অভ্যাস কর যে সাহসিকতা সত্যকে জানিতে চায় এবং জীবনে সেই সত্য দেখাইতে পারে যাহা মৃত্যুকে ভয় পায় না যাহা মৃত্যুকে স্বাগত বলিতে পারে যাহাতে মানুষ জানিতে পারে সে আত্মা আর সমুদয় জগতের কোন অস্ত্রেরই সাধ্য নাই তাহাকে সংহার করে সমুদায় মিলিত বজ্র শক্তির সাধ্য নাই তাহাকে সংহার করে জগতে সমুদায় অগ্নি সাধ্য নাই তাহাকে দগ্ধ করিতে পারে তবেই তুমি মহাপুরুষ তবেই তুমি তোমার প্রকৃত স্বরূপ জানিতে পারিবে তিন আজকাল কর্ম বিষয়ে বেশি কথা বলা এবং চিন্তাকে উড়াইয়া দেওয়ার খুব ঝোঁক কর্ম খুব ভালো বটে কিন্তু তাহাও চিন্তা হইতে প্রস্তুত চিন্তা ব্যতীত কোনো কার্য হইতে পারে না মস্তিষ্ককে উচ্চ উচ্চ চিন্তায় উচ্চ উচ্চ আদর্শে পূর্ণ কর দিবারাত্র মনের সম্মুখে ওইগুলি স্থাপন কর তাহা হইলেই বড় বড় কার্য হইবে চার তোমরা সিংহ স্বরূপ তোমরা আত্মা শুদ্ধ স্বরূপ অনন্ত ও পূর্ণ জগতের মহাশক্তি তোমাদের ভেতর হে সখে কেন রোদন করিতেছ জন্ম মৃত্যু তোমার নাই আমারও নাই তোমার রোগ দুঃখ কিছুই নাই তুমি অনন্ত আকাশ স্বরূপ নানা বর্ণের মেঘ উহার উপর আসিতেছে এক মুহূর্ত খেলা করিয়া আবার কোথায় অন্তর্হিত হইতেছে কিন্তু আকাশ যে নীল বর্ণই রহিয়াছে এই রূপ জ্ঞানের অভ্যাস করিতে হইবে পাঁচ আমরা জগতে অসদ্ভাব দেখি কেন পথের ধারে একটি স্থানও রহিয়াছে একটা চোর সেই পথ দিয়া যাইতেছিল সে ভাবিল ওটি এক পাহাড় আওয়াল নায়ক উহাকে উহার নায়িকা ভাবিল একটি শিশু উহা দেখিয়া ভূত মনে করিয়া চিৎকার করিতে লাগিল ভিন্ন ভিন্ন ব্যক্তি এই রূপে উহাকে ভিন্ন ভিন্ন ভাবে দেখিলেও উহা সেই স্থান শুষ্ক কাষ্ঠখণ্ড ব্যথিত আর কিছুই ছিল না ছয় আমরা নিজেরা যেমন জগৎকেও সেই রূপ দেখিয়া থাকি মনে করো ঘরে একটি শিশু আছে এবং টেবিলের ওপর এক থলে মোহর রহিয়াছে একজন চোর আসিয়া স্বর্ণমুদ্রাগুলি গ্রহণ করিল শিশুটি কি বুঝতে পারবে উহা অপহৃত হইল আমাদের ভিতর যাহা বাইরেও তাহাই দেখিয়া থাকি শিশুটির মনে চোর নাই সুতরাং সে বাইরেও চোর দেখে সাত জগতের পাপ অত্যাচারের কথা বলিও নিজে কাঁদো যে তোমাকে এখনো সর্বত্র পাপ দেখিতে হইতেছে যদি তুমি জগতের উপকার করিতে চাও তবে 
আর জগতের উপর দোষারোপ করিও না উহাকে আরো বেশি দুর্বল করিও না এই সকল পাপ দুঃখ প্রভৃতি আর কি এগুলি তো দুর্বলতারই ফল জগৎ এই রূপ শিক্ষা দ্বারা দিন দিন দুর্বল হইতে দুর্বলতর হয়ে যাচ্ছে মানুষ ছেলেবেলা হইতে শিক্ষা পায় যে সে দুর্বল ও পাপি তাহা দিগকে শেখাও যে তাহারা সকলেই সেই অমৃতের সন্তান তাহা দিগকে উহা শেখাও বাল্যকাল হইতেই তাহাদের মস্তিষ্কে এমন সকল চিন্তা প্রবেশ করুক যাহা তাহা দিগকে যথার্থ সাহায্য করিবে যাহা তাহা দিগকে সবল করিবে যাহাতে তাহাদের যথার্থ কল্যাণ হইবে সৎ চিন্তা স্রোতে গা ঢালিয়া দাও নিজের মনকে সর্বদা বলো আমি সেই আমি সেই তোমার মনে দিন রাত্রি ইহা সঙ্গীতের মতো বাজিতে থাকুক আর মৃত্যুর সময়ও সহহং সহহং বলিয়া দেহ ত্যাগ কর আমরা শুনছিলাম সান্নার খোলা থেকে স্বামীজির বাণী বাংলাতে অনুরোধ করব লিনার কাছে যে অডিওটা মনে হয় অন আছে অডিওটা যাতে অফ করে দেয় এবার আমরা যাব সোহেলের কাছে সোহেল আমাদের বেদান্ত থেকে পড়ে শোনাচ্ছিল আমাদের মনে হয় এটি তৃতীয় বা চতুর্থ বেদান্ত আমরা শুভাত তৃতীয় মনে হচ্ছে বেদান্ত থেকে আমরা শুনবো সোহেল পড়বে বেদান্তা ভয়েস অফ ফ্রিডম বইটি থেকে সোহেল গুড মর্নিং এভরিওয়ান লাস্ট ডে আই read about the passage from the book Vedanta, Voice of Freedom, and I talked about how Vivekananda uh, gradually realized and understood the meaning of non-dualistic uh, uh, realism, and how he stretched upon his guru, Swami Ramakrishna, for his uh, teaching of Aham Brahmasmi, that is, I am Brahman, and later I also read about how after the death of Sri Ramakrishna, Vivekananda faced a lot of troubles in his life when his uh, parents died and later he gradually uplifted himself uh, from all those problems and went to a path uh, to proclaim the non-dualistic Vedanta and teachings of Ramakrishna all over India and later in the western countries. So I will continue from that part. Uh, of the introduction part of how Swami Vivekananda uh, traveled to Chicago. While Vivekananda was traveling in India, he heard about a parliament of religion which was to be held in Chicago in September 1893. Many Indian rulers and influential people asked him to attend and represent Hinduism, the religion of Vedanta but initially he refused. While at Madras, he had a symbolic dream in which he saw Sri Ramakrishna walking over the ocean and beckoning him to follow. He also heard the master's voice saying, go, and with this realization, at last Vivekananda agreed. While arrangements were being made for his departure, Raja Ajit Singh of Khetri, who was a disciple of Vivekananda, requested him to come and bless his newborn son and also offered him to provide a ticket of his passage to America. Vivekananda consented and went to Khetri for the birthday function. And one evening while he was there, Maharaja invited Vivekananda to attend a musical performance by a dancing girl. However, Sami Vivekananda sent word in that return that he was a monk and he was not permitted to enjoy secular pleasures. The girl was hurt. And when she heard the message and sang this plantative song, which reached Swami's ear, Look not, O Lord, upon my sins. I am not same-sightedness, thy name. One piece of iron is in the image in the temple, and another the knife in the hand of the butcher. Yet, both of these are turned into gold when touched by a philosopher's stone. O Lord, look not upon my evil quality. Vivekananda was deeply moved. This dancing girl, whom society condemned as impure, had taught him a great lesson. Brahma, the even pure, the ever purer, ever free, ever illuminated, is the essence of all things. He immediately understood his mistake and came out of his room and joined the party. 
he later said that that incident removed the skills from my eyes seeing that all are indeed the manifestation of the one i could no longer condemn anybody vivekananda left bombay for chicago on may 31st 1893 traveling via japan and the pacific the world's parliament of religions of chicago was one of the significant events in the history of the world in the opening session of parliament vivekananda reiterated the eternal message of vedanta as the different streams having their sources in different places all mingle their waters into the sea so o oh lord the different paths which men take through different tendencies various though they may appear crooked or straight all lead to one <clears throat> the mrs s k bloodgate an american woman said later i was at the parliament of religions of chicago and when that young man got up and said sisters and brothers of america 7000 people rose to their feet as a tribute to something they knew not what and when it was over i saw scores of women walking over the benches to get him near to get near him i said to myself well my lad if you can resist that onslaught you are indeed a god the newspapers of america gave vivekananda much publicity and he be- became widely known the home of some of the wealthiest people of america society were open to him and there he was received as an honored guest but he never swayed away from his monastic monastic ideals or from the service he had set out to perform he started lecturing all over the midwest as well as on the east coast and in some southern states of the usa he founded the vedanta society in new york and trained some sincere students at thousand island park both through lectures and through personal contact vivekananda unveiled the spiritual treasures of vedanta to the western world as sister nivedita wrote where others would talk of ways and means he knew how to light a fire where others gave directions he would show the thing itself he was an orator of the divine right as one of the american newspaper reporter described him the truth is always simple as the teachings of all great teachers of the world demonstrate since vivekananda had himself experienced the ultimate reality he could make the truths of vedanta understandable to all he wrote to his disciples to put the hindu ideas into english and then make out of dry philosophy and intricate mythology and queer startling psychology a religion which shall be easy simple popular and at the same time meet the requirements of the highest mind is it talks only those can understand who have attempted it the dry abstract advaita must become living poetic in everyday life out of all hopelessly intricate mythology must come out concrete moral form and out of bewildering yogism must come the most scientific and practical psychology and all this must be put in a form so that child may grasp that is my life's work Vivekananda came in contact with many outstanding figures of the western world such as Max Muller, Paul Dawson, William James, Robert Ingersoll, Nikola Tesla, Sarah Bernhardt, Madam Emma Kahl, <coughs> etc. Madam Kahl, the famous opera singer, wrote in her autobiography that she was indebted to Vivekananda for her peace and prosperity. She also related an interesting story about the meeting of John D Rockefeller with Vivekananda at Chicago. the swami made rockefeller understand that god had given him wealth so that he might have the opportunity to help and do good to others rockefeller was annoyed at first that anyone would dare talk to him that way telling him what to do he left the room and without even saying goodbye but about a week later he came again to see the swami with a paper which set forth his plans to donate an enormous sum of money to a public institution well there you are he said you must be satisfied now and you can thank me for it vivekananda quietly read it and said it is for you to thank me this was rockefeller's first large donation to public welfare vivekananda returned to india in 1897 after visiting and lecturing in some european countries the triumphal reception of vivekananda in india was phenomenal millions of people paid homage to the swami and even rajas prostrated themselves before him he traveled and lectured all over india 
this time as a national hero. He began to waken, awaken the sleeping, subjugated nation with the clarion call of Vedanta. Awake, arise, and stop not till the goal is reached. Strength. Strength is what the Upanishads speak to me from every page. Be not weak. Will sin cure sin. Weakness cure weakness. Stand up and be strong. The first step in getting strength is to uphold the Upanishads and believe I am the sword. Me the sword cannot cut, nor weapons pierce. Me the fire cannot burn, me the air cannot dry. I am omnipotent, I am omniscient. So repeat this blessed saving word. Do not say we are weak. We can do anything and everything. We all have the same glorious soul. Let us believe in it. These concepts of Vedanta must come out, must not remain only in the forest, not only in the cave, but they must come out to work at the bar and at the bench, in the pulpit and in the cottage of the poor man. Carry the light and the life of Vedanta to every door and rouse up the divinity that is hidden within every soul. So today I will read up to this uh, because it ends with a very positive note. And I will read it further later. And I'm ending this in this position because I want to have this positive vibe uh, stay with every one of us for the days to come. Thank you. Thank you, Sohel. Amra Shunchilam, Sohel Kup Shundar Bhabe, Vedanta Teke Bolchilo, Evang Shamiji, Onegula aspect, Amra Deglam Shamiji. Chicago যাওয়া খুব ছোট করে আমরা জানলাম এবং কিভাবে বেদান্তে যে বাণীগুলো স্বামীজি আমেরিকাতে প্রচার করেছিলেন এবং ভারতবর্ষ আমাদের এবং পৃথিবী জুড়ে যাতে মানুষ এই সত্যতার জ্ঞান হয় যেরাম সোহেল বলল যে একটি পজিটিভ নোটের সঙ্গে যেন শেষ করছি সেই পজিটিভ নোটটি হচ্ছে যে আমরা আমাদের মধ্যেই সেই সব শক্তি আছে যা আমাদের মধ্যে লুকিয়ে আছে সেটিকে ম্যানিফেস্ট করতে হবে আমাদের কর্মের দ্বারা আমাদের চিন্তার দ্বারা আমরা দেখব আস্তে আস্তে কিভাবে সেটি ম্যানিফেস্ট করতে করা যায় এবং তাতেই সমাজের ও দেশের এবং গোটা পৃথিবী তাতে কিভাবে কল্যাণ হয় এর পরের চ্যাপ্টারগুলিতে সেটি যদি বলি ভালো কথায় ফর্মুলাগুলি দেখব বেদান্তে সহেলি আমাদের পরবর্তী কালে আশা করি পড়ে শোনাবে পরবর্তী জায়গাগুলো থেকে আজকে সোহেলের আরেকটি পাঠ আছে সেটি একটু পরে আসছি সোহেলের কাছে সোহেল আজকে বিনায়কজির বিনায়ক লোহানির জীবনী থেকে কিছু বলবে তার যে ওয়ার্ক গোটা ভারতবর্ষ জুড়ে তার কর্ম এবং নিঃস্বার্থ কর্মই বলা চলে স্বামীজির আদর্শে সেটি আমাদের ও একটু ডেসক্রাইব করবে একটু পরে তার আগে যেহেতু আজকের আমাদের ফোকাস ছিল যেহেতু গুরু নানক জন্মদিন কিছুদিন আগেই গেছে তো সেই উপলক্ষে গুরু নানক দেবজির টিচিংস থেকে আমি পড়বো লাইফ অ্যান্ড টিচিংস থেকে স্বাভাবিকভাবেই এটি একটি বিশাল জীবন এবং যেরকম আমরা বলে থাকি এই একটি ছোট্ট মিটে আর এই ছোট্ট সেগমেন্টে বলা সম্ভব না সেই বিশাল জীবন কিন্তু কিছু অ্যাসপেক্ট যতটুকু সম্ভব পড়া ততটুকু পড়ছি ছোট করে প্রথমে লাইফটা দেখছি তারপর আমরা টিচিংসে যাবো গুরু নানক দেবজির গুরু না গুরু নানক দেবজি ফোরটিন to 1539 that is the duration of his life of his earthly life monrovia guru nanak dev ji the founder of sikhism and the first guru teacher was born on yesterday uh, 550 years ago in a small village now in pakistan called raibhoi ki talwandi his father's name was mehta kalu and his mother's name was mata tripta This article is written by Upjit Singh Sachdeva Jiti, Honorary Consul General of India in Liberia. He had an elder sister, Bebe Nanki, who was five years older than him. His father worked as a Pathwari accountant responsible for the administration of agriculture and crop revenue in the village of Talwandi. His parents were both Hindu Khatris. As a young child, Nanak astounded many with his intelligence and, and his inclinations towards divine and philosophical topics. In his early modern period, as a ritual among Hindus, his father Mehta Kalu 
sent for his family priest pandit hari hari hardal and asked him to draw up the baby's janampatri or horoscope before proceeding to draw up the janampatri he wanted to have a close look at the child mata tripta had some hesitation but later his request was granted on seeing him pandit hardal bowed before him and touched his feet he then congratulated mehta kalu and said you are very fortunate to have him as your son he remarked the child will be a great person he will be loved and respected worshiped by hindus and muslim alike his name and fame will spread over many lands both his parents felt elated upon hearing this his father was a worldly man and wanted his son to acquire wealth fame and power so that he should be a successful worldly man too young nanak was a very unusual child he never cried not even when he was hungry he always had a radiant smile on his face as he grew older he did not grow up like the other children of his age there was a pond of clear water near their house young nanak was very fond of this place sometimes he would go near the pond all alone and sit there for hours meditating with half shut eyes focusing on god rai buller the village landlord used to watch guru nanak engage in the spiritual meditation today there is a gurudwara in memory of guru nanak at this pond called bal lila in early childhood his personality developed and became quite evident whenever a beggar a needy man or a sadhu saintly person called at the door he would run into the house take hold of whatever article of food or clothing he could get and give them into the hands of the needy beggar when guru nanak was 7 years of age his father decided to send him to school he asked his family priest to select a favorable day for commencement of young nanak's schooling on the day selected by pandit hardal mehta kalu took his son to pandit gopal who ran a small school he offered him 5 rupees and sweets and requested requested him to accept his son in the school pandit gopal accepted young nanak with pleasure he wrote the devanagari alphabet used for writing hindi on a wooden tablet and asked his new student to repeat each letter after him though he told him to write each letter on the wooden tablet guru learned this in no time as he knew it already the teacher gave him lessons in arithmetic and accounting and in the same way he quickly learned the subjects one day guru nanak took his seat a little apart from his schoolmates soon he began writing on his wooden tablet the teacher was watching him and finally he saw that guru had finished writing and was looking at his wooden tablet with satisfaction and joy the teacher went to nanak and asked him to show his tablet guru rose and gave his wooden tablet to his teacher the teacher was amazed beyond all measures pandit gopal went through the writing over and over his admiration and amazement increasing after each subsequent reading he touched the wooden tablet to his forehead and gave it back to guru nanak he was not only astonished but also convinced that his student was an avatar an incarnation of god he humbly bowed before him and took him to his father mehta kalu was surprised to see his son and his teaching coming towards him so early in the day he worried that nanak must have misbehaved or acted defiantly on reaching there the teacher said mehta ji your son is an avatar of god he is not an ordinary mortal he will be a great teacher of mankind mehta kalu did not believe what he was told as he was a man of the world he wanted his son to be wise in the way of the world upon hearing this mehta kalu insisted that the son continue to be taught by the pandit despite what his teacher thought however pandit exclaimed he knows everything and there is nothing to be known there rather i live learn from him he has opened my eyes and i have learned from him saying this the pandit took his leave 
and left Mehta Kalu in disbelief and amazement. Thus, Guru stopped going to Pandit Gopal's school. He was free once again to do what he liked, sometimes running, jumping, and playing with other children of his age, but often he would sit at home. Mehta Kalu, advised by the family priest to send Guru Nanak to the Sanskrit scholar Brijnath to continue his education. Here too, Guru Nanak was quick to learn Sanskrit. In a similar manner, he taught the Sanskrit scholar Brijnath at the same time. Having done this again, he resumed his former ways of spending time with sadhus, saints, persons, and fakirs around the forest of Talwandi. He met them and had learned discourses on Vedas, Shastras, etc. His father was not pleased at the ways of his only son. He wanted his son to be a successful man of the world. He sought advice from Rai Bular. He suggested that Guru Nanak be sent to learn Parsian the official administrative language used for all state documents and accounts. He promised that if he learned that language, he would employ Nanak, giving him the charge of his office, as well as the role of a patwari in succession to his father. His father accepted his suggestion and sent Guru Nanak to Maulavi Kutwauddin of Talwandi to learn Persian. There too, he astonished his teacher by the quickness with which he learned all the Maulavi taught him. After learning Parsian as much as he wanted, Guru Nanak taught his teacher about God and his ways and made Malvi Kutubuddin his student. There are several Parsian words and verses found in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Having finished his Parsian education, once again Guru Nanak was free to enjoy God and nature and the society of religious men. When Guru Nanak was 11 years of age, it was necessary, according to the religious custom of the family, to invest him with the sacred thread of Janju. A day was fixed for the ceremony. His father made great preparations and invited him an invited guest. There was a great gathering on the appointed day. A carpet was spread on the raised platform. Pandit Hardal, the family priest, drew a circle on the platform and took his seat. He asked Mehta Kalu to bring his son for whom the seat was provided, facing the priest. Guru Nanak came and took his sitting. Hardal began the ceremony by chanting mantras from the Vedas to appease the stars. He then blessed young Nanak by reciting Vedic mantras. Then he blessed the sacred thread in the same way. When Hardal lifted Guru Nanak's arm, holding the thread in his hand in order to put it around Guru Nanak's neck, he caught the priest's uplifted hand and asked, what are you doing? What is this cotton thread? Why is it one? What are the advantages of it? The priest replied that the sacred thread is the base of Hindu religion. By wearing it, he would be admitted to an upper caste, and it symbolizes his having attended the spiritual birth. By wearing this, Nana would obtain honor and greatness in this world and happiness in the next world. This thread had been endowed with the power of Vedic mantras, and it would give him spiritual power. Explaining all this, he proceeded to carry on with the thread ceremony. But Guru Nanak was not satisfied and said, if the thread is to be a symbol of spiritual birth, it should be something befitting the nature of the spirit of the soul. The soul is deathless, but thread may break, get soiled, burnt, or lost. Then the wearer has to put on a new one. When a man dies, the thread remains with the body. It does not accompany his soul. The soul departs threatless. The priest was astonished and said, everyone wears this thread. What thread would satisfy you? Guru Nanak replied, a lasting sacred thread for the soul that can be made by practicing ideals of religion and morality in day-to-day -day life. There, your soul will be truly invested with the sacred thread. Pandit Hardal agreed with Guru Nanak but argued that everyone should live by noble virtues, but at the same time must respect the traditional customs created by their forefathers. He further stated, a Hindu without a sacred thread is a man without religion. I am sure you won't want to be a man without religion, so come and put on the thread. Guru Nanak responded, I see people who wear the thread committing all kinds of foulest deeds. They steal, rob, kill, 
deceive and commit countless sins and crimes against fellow creatures pandit hardal was left speechless the guest and all those in attendance felt compelled by nanak's words pointing at the paradox of the sacred thread they all admired his courage to inquire about and challenge the rituals of hinduism well in our next talk maybe you will listen to the other parts of guru nanak ji how he turned on to become also the great guru of the sikh religion and also of other traditions also also now we will read from the teachings of guru nanak what were the teachings especially as for considering the philosophy of guru nanak dev ji guru nanak ji saying compiled by jairam 5 when i was there hari was not there when hari was there i was not there i was not there nanak jab ji sahib the mool mantra of the seed mantra with which the adi granth begins contains the essence of nanak's teachings it declares that god in one and his name is truth he is eternal and formless who can be realized only through his grace nanak offers a simple yet direct solution to reach god and that path is through the heart of the seeker his teaching is earthly and practical which anyone test and find god within themselves through singing and praying one becomes immersed in the thought of him and enters the state of samadhi or union with god thus for nanak prayer becomes the path when one is totally immersed in it the following are a few important aspects of his teachings ahimsa do not speak evil of anyone this is the ahimsa of thought do not speak harshly to anyone this is the ahimsa of speech do not impede anyone's word this is the ahimsa of action forgive him who speaks ill of you practice physical mental and spiritual forbearance help those who are suffering even at the cost of your life asceticism guru nanak did not advocate ascetic life as a way of salvation he himself led a normal amis society in touch with people of his time though he was completely god centered and detached from the world and its ways he preached that asceticism was not the way and the way to salvation was not incompatible with good life laughing eating playing and dressing well and other aspects were humility religious tolerance god soul and man the importance of surrender and the five stages of spiritual progress he mentioned dharam kand number 1 the first stage consists of performing of one's duty sincerely gyan kand the first stage leads to the second where a devotee gains a true awareness of the greatness of god his true attributes saram kand in this phase the devotee attains purity of mind and understanding for karam kand in the fourth phase the devotee gains the fruits of his good actions he acquires divine grace acquires divine grace and true spiritual power such kand through the grace of god now the devotee enters the realm of god which is beyond all human activity and the ordinary reality we were listening to the great life and teachings of the first sikh guru guru nanak dev ji or the founder of sikh religion now we will go to sohel who will be telling us in short the various work and the various movements with which vinayak lohani ji is associated with and how he is carrying out his service related work throughout india as per swami ji's vision so I'll... thank you akuluti mm. now i ended the teachings of swami vivekananda in a positive vibe and i want to recollect that how this message of swami vivekananda affected and inspired inspired so many people all around and how this positive work is being carried out at present day so i ended at the year 1897 80 years from now there's a boy is born by the name vinayak lohani 
He was born in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, and he did school there. His father was an ISS, IAS officer at the MP Cadre. Like any other children at that time, he also pursued a degree in engineering and passed BTEC from IIT Kharagpur. Later, he worked at a company of Infosys, IT company Infosys, and worked for another one year there. And like many others who had big dreams of earning lots of money from corporate world, he also did his MBA from IIM Calcutta. But during this time, something struck with him. He became associated with the works of Swami Vivekananda. He inspired by the spiritual and humanistic ideals of Sri Ramakrishna and Swami Vivekananda and decided to divide, devote his entire life to the serving of divine men as taught by Swami Vivekananda. So, in this process, at IIM Calcutta, Vinayak opted out of the placement process. And after completing the MBA course with just three children in a small building, he started Parivar a place for children from impoverished and destitute backgrounds in late 2003. At the end of 2004, Parivar purchased its own land and developed its campus. Parivar, I think someone's uh, mic is on, so it, can you please? Oh. Okay, thank you. At the end of 2004, Parivar purchased its own land and developed its first campus, Parivar Ashram. In 2011, Parivar expanded to having separate campuses for boys and girls. As of October 2018, there are more than 2,000 residents at Parivar, making it the largest and high-quality residential program for children from impoverished state of West Bengal. In 2016 and 17, Parivar also started working in Madhya Pradesh. It has started 84-day boarding meal-come education centers for children in selected impoverished tribal and rural pockets called Sri Ramakrishna Vivekananda Seva Kutir in the US. At these Kutirs, more than 7,500 children are getting nutritious meal along with strongly supplementary education and life skills over morning and evening shifts. Currently, Vinayak Lohani has become a public figure. However, he is very less known. But to say about the honors he has received, I may name a few. These are National Award for Child Welfare 2011, presented by the Rashtrapati himself. Sanskriti Award, India's premier award for the young achievers in 2011, that has been honored by APJ Abdul Kalam. He is IIM Calcutta and IIT Kharagpur Distinguished Alumnus Award recipient in 2014, respectively. So these are some of the accolades that he received. Now I will read a small article detailing about how he was involved in this. And this is an article from 2004 uh, by the writer Irene O'Brien. 75 homeless children in Kolkata have finally found the, their home in Parivar. They have a roof over their head. They go to school, play cricket, celebrate birthdays. Once again, they have won their childhood back, thanks to the 26-year-old Vinayak Lohani. Four years back, Lohani was at the crossroad. One path promised a smooth drive to success and the other a bumpy ride. An engineer, Lohani was working with Infosys when he joined the prestigious Indian Institute of Management, Kolkata. The future looked rosy and rich, and life seemed miles away from the tragedies of social reality. But Lohani took the other path, the bumpy one, the one not many dared to tread. For months, he walked by the bylanes of slums and red light areas of the city. That journey ended in the formation of Parivar a shelter for the homeless and abandoned children. Paribar helps rehabilitate orphans, street children, and children of sex workers in Kolkata. Ask Vinayak why he chose Parivar over I am Kolkata. 
he retorts are all of us sure why we want to do a particular thing and not the other one else i wonder if it is really is societal norms set your path and give you limited choices like others i was too following the path that was the norm first engineering one year a stint at a private company and then management then go for a big shot but now i am looking and i consider myself a misfit in the im environment it was not an easy decision i was discouraged by friends and well wishers from pursuing this idea some did not take me seriously but honestly speaking there was something in me that was impelling me to do what i wanted recalls vinay and therefore he started parivar starting with just three children from chetla and kaligarh vinay started a journey to fulfill his dream for 9 months i faced humiliation to get the money to start up things i took a part time job as a faculty member in an institute training students for management in front exam it was only then when people gradually started realizing that i was serious about what i wanted to do children at parivar have found the special magic of this unique family they attend formal day schools and provided that pro- and providing evening tutorials by teachers at the shelter Parivar is just like my family recalls the children that attend school and come back guided in studies by the teachers there they are broken in small groups of 5 to 10 children each we feel if the environment is right any child can achieve anything through mainstream education says mr lohani we are against vocational education programs that many advocate which have an underlying assumption that an unprivileged child is not worthy enough for long term opportunities and thus should learn something to get to square a mill that's not the way things should be in an egalitarian society without giving opportunities why one cannot evaluate the abilities as a part of initiatives parivar has been identifying vulnerable girls from red light areas in collaborative effort with tanlab and cini asha these are the ngos working in kolkata for such girls parivar provides an alternative through education so that they do not get stuck into prostitution and therefore can look forward to a dignified life as a result of parivar as a result parivar is looking for donors who can support about 25 of these girls whom they are planning to admit here through the support a child scheme currently over 150 alumni are enrolled as donors with parivar under the support a child scheme they make regular contribution as a part of future projects parivar is starting one such center in raichak and kharagpur in west bengal by january 2005 dressed in dhoti kurta vinayak is still restless i have achieved my goal but that does not mean the end of my work i have a long way to go so this was uh, highly motivating and a very uh, promising story about vinayak lohani who lived his rosy dreams and worked for humanitarian purposes he was inspired by swami vivekananda and sri ramkrishna and we can see how leading a simple life and helping others can bring a lot of joy within ourselves thank you we were listening to sohel's beautiful talk on vinayak ji's service related work as for the vision of swami ji throughout india and how uh, intellectually a great person he was even uh, with that great intellect how he uh, brought forward education to the door of the poor and also neglected parts of society that was what uh, with what vision he started parivar and he is today a successful person and also an inspiration for young generation like people like us we can uh, learn lots of things from vinayak ji's uh, vinayak ji's vision and there was a request in our group that if uh, present day uh, figures can be brought in our meet and their stories can be brought who are working practically uh, as swami ji has preached vedanta in the real life if those stories can be shared who are living actually so i i thought that was a great suggestion especially from joy and any and many others in our group and that worked out today very well and so had also beautifully explained how he 
started the Parivar Sangstan and how it is going on and what is the next vision that uh, uh, Vinayak ji have and how he says that my that my work is still a long way to go. It's a good thing, good way to end up. And with this with Soil's lecture, we come to the end of our program. And today, we last speaker was Moyuk. Moyuk would be uh, reading uh, from Swami Ranganathanandaji's life. I hope Moyuk is in our live program. He is Moyuk available in our live program. I think he is not available. So maybe we will shift that program afterwards in any other time of the meet. He was also a panelist in today's talk. Maybe due to some emergency, he could not be with us. And with that note of Sohel stock has been with Vinayak Lohaniji's inspiration. And today we have also seen Guru Nanak Dev Ji's life and Swami Vivekananda's life. We uh, pray to Thakur Ma and Swamiji. May those teachings get imbibed in our life and may we follow that life in practicality. What Swamiji says is practical application of the principles of religion is what make us religious, not just uttering the mantras or the doctrines from the religious books. That should be our goal and that we should be always seeking. Swamiji says that realization is religion. Realization is everything in India. So you must realize those, those truths as preached in those books. Christmas is approaching us. So I have also plans that we'll be reading from Jesus Christ's teachings and how Swamiji saw Jesus Christ, Sri Ramakrishna, has done uh, sadhana on Christianity. We'll look, on, on, we'll look also on those aspects in our later talks. And we have plans also to sing, especially before the last Sunday, before Christmas, some Christmas carols and songs on Jesus Christ. With this note, we end our today's meet. Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om Tatsat. Sri Ramakrishna Arpunamastu